And our next speaker uh, is Dr. Maria Martinelli from Deltaris, the Netherlands. And uh, uh, his topic uh, today is MPM simulation of penetration problems. Maria is a part-time consultant and research in the Infra and Structures Department at Delta Harris since November 2015. He joined Delta Harris in January of uh, 2014 as a Marie Curie Research Fellow. Okay. His consultant and research activity is in the field of constitutive modeling, uh, large deformation, large strain consolidation, and sediments after recumulation recum and earthquake engineering, soil structure, interaction, modeling of landslides run out and pyre uh, installation process. Okay, please, Mario. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, may I share my, uh, my screen? Uh, share. Can you see my screen? <coughs> yes. Yeah. So yes. Um, today, we, what I'm going to uh, talk is uh, is basically the um, uh, what we what we did in the last couple of years regarding at Deltares, uh, regarding the modeling of uh, penetration problem uh, with the with the material point method. Um, uh, basically, uh, we work on two uh, topics. Uh, one is the site investigation and 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 in particular the uh, the modeling of the compenetration tests uh, the other was the uh, modeling of pile installation the pile installation with uh, I'm going to explain later but uh, just to give you an overview uh, with different installation methods uh, with the traditional impact driven uh, method but also I'm explaining now uh, the new developed technique, uh, gentle file uh, driving, uh, which is an innovative technique that has been, uh, let's say, um, uh, invented and uh, tested uh, in the field, but also simulated now in the in the with the material point methods. So, uh, starting with the, with the compenetration test uh, is is well. Uh, if, known test uh, actually developed uh, uh, it, uh, originally at the uh, GeoDelft, um, which which was the former Deltares. Actually, it was case composed of a cone and the and a shaft. And the uh, it is widely used for soil classification, soil parameter determination, liquefaction assessment. But they basically, all the uh, uh, study, let's say, so far have been um, focus on uh, chamber test results uh, or um, uh, analytical and numerical solution but of course nowadays with the with the development of large deformation modeling uh, can allow a quantitative uh, cpt interpretation strategies which can be refined definitely with this uh, new advanced technology such as uh, an mpm so and that's what uh, what we did and, and we try to, let's say, start with a uh, good validation case focusing on ascent behavior. So uh, we found uh, in literature from the group of uh, Professor Salgado an example, a good example of the, uh, let's say, um, compenetration test in, in, in sand. So you see on the left picture, it's basically uh, um, a chamber test uh, 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 where half of the cone is, uh, is pushed through uh, a sand box and, uh, and there's a screen where, where you can uh, see the, develop, the movement of the sand particles during the penetration, sand grains during the penetration. So in that sense, uh, you have the ability uh, to control and to see the cone resistance with depth. So development of cone resistance with depth, which is, the, for example, the graph in the middle which shows uh, con the, development, the evolution of the cone resistance with the, with the depth of the penetration. But also you see uh, at every instant, you see the, the, the movement of the solid grains. And so therefore you see the displacement, the soil displacement field. And that is very helpful 
because then uh, uh, then you can, of course, validate your your numerical model uh, and, and much more accurately. <clears throat> uh, for for this study, we use a state independent uh, constitutive model, although it was uh, a quite uh, a restrictive uh, assumption. Um, uh, this model works uh, is a double hardening soil model. So you see there is a linear elastic domain. Uh, there is a, a two year surfaces, uh, one that controls uh, mostly the volumetric, um, plastic volumetric strains, and the other one, the, the cone, uh, which controls uh, the deviatoric strains. And there is a unique fixed uh, failure surface uh, with, uh, with, cert with some parameters that are uh, fixed along the, uh, this yield surface. This is the restrictive, uh, let's say, uh, assumption to use a state independent model, although the same behavior is widely described with state dependent model. That means that the parameters depend on void ratio and, stre and stresses, but the, uh, the amount of data we, we, we had were, uh, was not able to um, let's say calibrate uh, uh, a state dependent uh, state dependent model. Uh, despite this, uh, we were able to uh, uh, to uh, still have uh, uh, quite uh, uh, good uh, results in the modeling uh, phase, which uh, which uh, which were uh, quite which show promising uh, results in the in the MPM simulations. So th this model has been calibrated by a uh, odometer test. You see in the, the top right figure. You see odometer test results, which are the circles of the experiment, and, and uh, the the continuous line is the model results. And then there are parameters. The only parameter we we play with were the uh, um, basically the strength parameter along the failure surface, which were in particular the peak friction angle and peak dilation angle. So um, uh, the uh, model of CPT works uh, uh, is, is, let's say, was already, uh, this method is, is called, uh, use the, the approach of the moving mesh. So part of the mesh of the domain is, is fixed uh, and, and, and translate the other, the other part of the mesh is compressible, which, uh, and so the element uh, shrink uh, and, and, and accordingly to displacement of the moving mesh. Um, you see the the penetrometer here, the, uh, and then uh, be basically uh, between the penetrometer and the soil, there is a contact surface, and uh, two simul so the uh, soil is, uh, uh, is simulated with the um, uh, the green line, the green color here. And uh, the uh, the loading applied in the centrifuge test, the the, the chamber test was uh, was uh, uh, applied as if uh, using a surcharge layer, basically. So volume element with a given density that apply a given uh, total stress on the on the surface of the soil. Uh, in this model, we use a two D axisymmetric MPM, which was uh, let's say um, implemented uh, uh, some years ago. Um, and, and of course, uh, gave the advantage of having much more, um, uh, much faster calculation uh, compared to the traditional 3D uh, approach. Um, and then you see, and then you see get the, the, the advantage of having the displacement field. So here you, you, you have, uh, in the middle, you have the, the figure where you have the experimental results and you have a core resistance, the evolution of core resistance with depth. Uh, but also on the on the left picture and the right picture, you see uh, basically the comparison between the MPM and the experiment uh, in terms of vertical displacement field after a given after a penetration. And uh, on the right side, there's uh, this the, the the description of the radial displacement field. So you see uh, a very nice uh, agreement uh, between the uh, numerical model and the uh, experimental results. Um, so uh, we also move to uh, the description of the uh, uh, modeling of a CPT using a state demand model. You see here uh, tests uh, that are um, uh, some standard lab tests, like, like drain tree axle tests and also odometer tests. You see the same model with the same set of parameters can describe multiple uh, densities. 
uh, the with a unique set of uh, parameter. Um, in this case, we use the constitutive model called Norsend, and then we applied uh, the uh, CPT modeling in the with the unique set of parameter uh, to the description of the uh, send a different uh, initial state values and initial state parameters or uh, initial relative density basically so you see here curves uh, that increase so the corn resistance increase uh, uh, by increasing the uh, the value of the uh, let's say uh, the absolute value of the state parameter or or the initial or the relative density so you see here a comparison between the experimental data, uh, which uh, in this graph shows the uh, normalized corn resistance, so um, corn resistance sort of corn resistance divided by the uh, initial stress in the in the chamber test, and so you see good, good correspondence between the experimental data and the MPM simulation over a wide range of uh, initial state parameter or relative density. So uh, that gives us the uh, confidence that the tool is uh, is also able to uh, give more insight into the uh, parameter determination. Um, but that's uh, so, and and that's uh, that's the first uh, uh, step. Uh, but also, uh, um, uh, so we we then we um, uh, the 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 other topic was the. Uh, basically, pile installation. Over the last uh, ten, I would say ten years, uh, uh, there was a large, uh, let's say, research interest and also industrial interest uh, around the mono bias installation. The mono bias installation uh, are needed to to the install the uh, construction of wind farms, and you see here a picture of uh, of um, wind turbines. <clears throat> that are progressively go, uh, becoming uh, bigger and bigger. And so these are the piles that you nowadays uh, expect to construct uh, well, uh, to build. That's so uh, yeah, the, current, out. The, yeah. the current uh, the current uh, design questions basically are what is the after what is the stress uh, the, the density change and stress uh, change after installation? Uh, and also what is the following response uh, under uh, eventually cyclic but also monotonic ladder loading after the installation of these objects so the the need of a tool is uh, is, is really important so the tools that can uh, simulate the full installation and so uh, the type of installation method are are there are basically three type of installation method jacking which is basically you push the pile uh, at a given displacement uh, uh, rate into the soil, or, or you um, you apply impact forces. You see, uh, uh, and 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 also uh, the, in the, uh, more recently, uh, you do a vibro driving. That means you you have a dynamic oscillations, uh, uh, harmonic oscillation at pile head, and then you try you install this uh, this pile. Uh, um, into the soil. Of course, uh, uh, you um, uh, the the jacking is is can be used, but uh, to a certain extent, because for very large uh, piles, the jacking is not uh, 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 it's not possible to perform. So therefore, you you only have the ability to use impact driving or vibro driving. And this uh, this is another case. So we try to validate our uh, NPM tool. Uh, with some experimental uh, data uh, published. It's again an example uh, published is a, is a 1G model uh, published by this uh, group of Salgado. And it's, uh, it's again, it's uh, uh, a container with some uh, sand, uh, dry sand, uh, compact uh, different relative densities, 40%, 60%, and 90%. And with the pile here, uh, that is, uh, it's basically approximately one, one, one and twenty meters and three centimeters diameters that is uh, being pushed uh, by impact driving into the soil. So uh, the nice thing is the, the in, after this uh, experiment, every time you have the number as a result, you have a number of uh, blow counts, so number of blows versus penetration depth uh, as a, as a result of this experiment. So uh, with the, our MPM model, we could uh, try to simulate this. This is a, an axisymmetric, again, axisymmetric to the MPM. Uh, 
uh, with the contact surface, uh, the pile is here. So uh, one portion of the pile is here. So you, you, you have a, a, a contact surface here and the, and the soil uh, beneath. So we again use the concept of the moving mesh. Uh, so part of the mesh is moving down and then uh, the, the other rest of the elements are adjusted. Um, the law that we apply here is energy consistent. So we know beforehand the, the, the mass of the, uh, the falling mass that is uh, impacting the pile head in the experiment. So we back calculate how much would be the force and the impulse time uh, to, um, uh, to describe the impact force uh, to make it energy consistent. Uh, so uh, for the sand now, we, it's, uh, we use the delta sand models. It's just recently published. It's uh, it's, a, it's again double hardening, but it's also kinematic hardening uh, models. So you see, uh, it's uh, it's uh, it has a um, it's an elastoplastic uh, uh, state dependent elastoplastic model where the stiffness, strength, and dilation angle are a function of the of the state of the material. Uh, so uh, uh, there is this uh, uh, little uh, cone here who moves in the stress space, and then by moving this, then you develop the plastic uh, plastic strains. All details are uh, written in the original paper uh, published uh, recently. There is uh, the advantage of this uh, model is that there is a little uh, risk, quite reasonable set of parameters, and some of them are. Um, widely uh, well explained in the in the original paper uh, where most of them are basic parameters which are uh, basically needed for the monotonic behavior uh, some of them are needed for cyclic behavior some uh, some others for the sort of small strain stiffness but uh, this is a model that is able to describe not only the monotonic behavior but also a cyclic uh, response of the same and in this, uh, in this thing, you, you see here on the left video, you see the penetration uh, actually of the, of the pile into the, so uh, into the uh, sand. And you see the void ratio evolution uh, contour in the, in the domain. And here on the, uh, in the, it, this is a typo actually, it's not the void ratio, but it's the depth of the penetration. So you see, Basically, uh, the, on the right figure, you see the depth of the penetration, and you see for different reality density, the comparison between the experiment, which is the dotted line, and the continuous line is the, is the, is the MPN. And for a single set of, of, of parameters, we, could, we were able to uh, uh, very nicely uh, describe the uh, a good, uh, the penetration, the impact-driven uh, pile installation in the, in the, for this case. Uh, uh, the last thing is I'll show you the, um, uh, the last example of, of pile installation we are, we are now facing. So there is a need of innovation in this, uh, in this field. So the impact-driven is, is not anymore, let's say, is, is one becomes one of the methods, but other type of methods are, uh, are needed. Uh, to better uh, and this, to better reduce actually the, uh, the impact on the environment because the impact driven uh, pile installation we do uh, produce a lot of large amount of noise uh, and so to better understand the uh, <clears throat> uh, the uh, the uh, uh, so so to to also to ensure a higher penetration rate. So there is a large innovation at this moment. And, and gentle driving on piles is actually is a project and you can go to this uh, website to have more details, uh, which propose an innovative te technique with the vibro, uh, vertical vibro uh, uh, oscillations with a torque, with a harmonic um, high frequency uh, torque. Uh, so uh, the, the pile is not moving, uh, the pile is not moving only up and down, but also uh, uh, exhibit uh, uh, a rotation, harmonic rotation, and that's what we what we did. Actually, there was a, a test done a couple of years ago, a field scale test in in in, near, in the area near Rotterdam. You see, this is a real case. So it's a ten meter pile with a diameter of about uh, uh, seventy centimeter. It's an open ended pile, so this is cross section, and uh, and and basically the uh, the uh, 
the shaker at the top, you, you see that it, it, it can apply a, an axial vibration, but also tor torsional vibration. And the torsional vibration rates are, 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 are at about 60 hertz. So with that, for, to, to be able to simulate this, we have to develop a 2DX axis symmetric formation with the additional uh, uh, rotational degree of freedom. So there is also an additional rotation degree of freedom that means out of plane uh, displacement and velocity field. Uh, and, and also we uh, in, use, a, a, for this case, a, a state independent considering model uh, to simulate uh, this uh, behavior at the beginning. So you see uh, the cross section of the model. So this is a, uh, a pile. Uh, all uh, mesh refinement is uh, is around the pile, and uh, and at the beginning is also uh, uses a moving mesh approach. So part of the mesh is uh, is constant, and the other is is, is compressing. Uh, uh, as I said, we model the pile as a, as a rigid body. So. Uh, the, the action are, are the loading are, are, are um, applied to the center of mass of the pile and the uh, shaker the uh, loading of the shaker it transfers as a, as a static force at the pile head but also there's harmonic rotational force uh, at 60 hertz applied as a, at, the, at the at the pile uh, in out of plane direction. So this is an, an example, very few uh, milliseconds, let's say. So you see a pile, and this is out of plane velocity. So you see this pile moving uh, in and out of the plane. And these are the waves that are shear waves that are propagated through the domain. Um, what we did, we compare the uh, penetration uh, with the, let's say, the response of this uh, model uh, against other type of uh, installation uh, methods, like traditionally like jacked or GDP or impact driven. So you see here, the results are shown for the internal shaft. Uh, so all reaction force along the internal shaft, uh, uh, tip at the tip and the external shaft. So you see uh, for the for the jacked, you see uh, basically uh, the internal, internal shaft example, the very large uh, reaction force uh, due to the fact that the pile being pushed exhibits a large uh, um, um, uh, stress concentration into the into the into the internal part of the pile uh, whereas this is not happening in the in the impact driven uh, that much uh, but for overall what you see is that uh, uh, the uh, reaction forces uh, 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 reaction forces uh, uh, calculated by the GDP uh, they are much lower compared to the other other cases that gives a promising uh, option for the installation in the near future so this is uh, also we it was observed in a field and uh, and that was a really good confirmation also in the and with the npm tool but this is a really a preliminary results the last thing is that we also uh, try to use simulate with the delta send model and then you see that there's quite, the mechanism is quite uh, complex. So you have uh, uh, basically during the installation, you have uh, a loosening uh, of the uh, soil body near the, near the uh, pile and the, the slide densification further away. So just, these are just uh, preliminary results, but just uh, they, they, they are, uh, let's say, intend to highlight the important aspect in the installation. So overall, what we uh, conclude is that we, uh, let's say valid, develop and validate the 2D axisymmetric with rotation of degree of freedom and PM, which gives uh, consistent and stable results. And for the CPT, we've got very good agreement uh, uh, using both uh, uh, state independent and state dependent models, uh, not only with the con resistor, but also with displacement fields. So that gives a, a reliable tool. And, uh, and also for pine installations, we validated uh, against the lab scale test uh with impact driven which was installed with using impact driven uh, uh type of installation and also we uh, the, the tool give promising results also for the new developed NIC uh, gdp uh but thanks okay thanks mario
a very nice presentation. Mm. Okay, let me see if if we have any question from the audience. Okay, uh, there is one question from the online audience. How do you determine the friction between pyre and sand in different installa installation methods? Um, uh, that's a, that's a very good question. Uh, uh, um, this is a, an ongoing activity. Actually, uh, uh, there is a, a clear uh, relation between the, the grain size, the, the roughness of the the surface, but also the type of loading, and the um, and the mm, the level, the stress level. Uh, for example, in the CPT uh, case, you have uh, you have very large uh, uh, stresses, uh, which in some cases uh, lead to grain crushing, and that's also affect the uh, the contact uh, properties um, between penetrometer and the and the uh, and the soil. So it's uh, it's really. Um, uh, a, 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 an important uh, aspect of the of the simulation. At this moment, uh, what we what we have is uh, uh, a constant uh, uh, friction angle. Um, uh, for, for if I if I uh, focus on the sand behavior as a constant friction angle, which is constant and independent of the of the state of the material, but that should be uh, really improved. Um, so we did some variation on the on the uh, friction angle to account for uh, these aspects. So uh, eventually possible uh, uh, crushing on changes in grain size, but this is uh, something an ongoing activity. Okay, thank you. Okay, and uh, thank you. Okay, that's all for this uh, session, and we will have uh, a tea break for ten minutes. Okay.